morning devotionals. <laughs> Have you ever noticed how, or maybe you haven't noticed, how appearances can mislead you? They say don't judge a book by its cover, but <laughs> how else are we going to determine what's inside of it? But read the back cover. But for me, one of the experiences that I had with God as a born-again Christian in the early Jesus moment was that I noticed because I had these self-esteem issues that people reacted to me in different ways. They said I was a certain way or they portrayed me as a certain person and never understood who I was inside. And I think that's why I love Jesus so intimately and personally because he always seemed to know who I was as opposed to what people saw or projected onto me, what they wanted me to be or wanted to make fit of the personality they saw. Because in my early days, I had long hair and I had, I didn't even have a beard, come to think of it, but I had long hair and and uh, wore the clothes of a hippie, you know, and I was very intellectual, so I could comment on almost any subject and was interested in everything, so I would read everything. and I could participate in any conversation because I had information right there handy available to me at the forefront of my mind because that was what I was interested in. And with that came a certain persona that they people would look at and say, oh, well, he's a hippie. He's, he's one of those. You know, and it was funny was that later in life as I shaved off my hair and put on my suit and I had a suit and tie and I would go around with always dressed up in you know, looking clean and proper and having my tie always put in place, people treated me with respect and they said, oh, look at him. He's such a wonderful person. And the funny thing was I hadn't changed any. I was still the same person with the long hair that I was with the suit on. And I didn't feel different when I put the suit on. And it's funny because later on in life when I put on a uniform and I was wearing in the military, I felt important and it changed my self-esteem and I thought I was somebody. And I wasn't because I was still the same person inside. And you know what's amazing is that later when I put on security outfits, you know, when I was working in security, the same thing. People would look at you with a different persona. And it's funny because then when I grew a beard the first time, it was flaming red and people would look at me like, strange, you know, and that's interesting, you know, and they were like, who is that? And people didn't recognize me because when I was clean shaven, I looked one way and when I was with a full beard, I looked completely different. And it's amazing how we react to that because we look on the outward things, but God looks on the heart. And yet inside, I was still me. Gradually, as I learned to adapt to these personas, and then I began to put on what I was wearing for my persona in my jobs and situations that I had to, I learned how people make mistakes. Do you do that? Do you judge people by first impressions, by the outward things, and not the inner? Be careful. <laughs> Sometimes people wear many hats. In Tozer, our first service for God, inward devotion. But one thing is needful, and Mary hath chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. Luke 10, 42. Some Christians seem to feel that it is a mark of spirituality to attend banquets and seminars and workshops and conferences and courses night after night and week after week. This brings up a lesson from the New Testament concerning the sisters Mary and Martha. I think it is plain that Martha loved Jesus, but her concept of devotion was activity, that because she loved the Lord, she ought to be doing something all the time to show it. Mary also loved the Lord Jesus, but with a different attitude in her devotion. She was fervently occupied in spirit about the love of his Godhead. Our Lord knew the difference then, and he knows the difference today. Jesus commended Mary for knowing the value of the one thing that is necessary that God should be loved and praised above all other businesses that we occupy ourselves with and which may occupy us bodily or spiritually. Mary was fervently occupied in the spirit about the love of his Godhead, about the love of God, and I like that. Although I know it sounds strange and almost heretical to our modern activists who want to always be about 
doing something for God rather than doing with God and being still before Him. My plea is that we may not be satisfied to continue on as external Christians, but rather internal. I believe that our Lord wants us to learn more of Him in worship before we become busy for Him. He wants an inner experience of the heart as our first service. Out of that will grow the profound and divine activities which are necessary. It is true that there's a certain amount of reality to doing things in we call Christian circles that are important. You should attend church. You should participate in a certain amount of Christian, quote-unquote, religious activity. But sometimes there's also a point where you become so activity-minded that you're no longer personality-minded of who Jesus is because you're always with your friends. You're always doing this, you're always doing that, but you're never alone with God as He wants you to be. Maybe with all the activity you may run over someone, you may stomp on their feelings, you may hurt their sensibilities, you may be busy with those that are of the same ilk as you and not see that God may have someone next to you who needs what you already have. The reality is there is a balance and only God can bring it to you and show you which is true for you, being a Mary or a Martha, because many people that I see in the church are active, very, very active, and God bless them. But I also see, having worked behind the ministry, that often the doers are not the believers, because they're busy doing things and they haven't applied it to their life as much as they think they have. If you stick in your thumb and you pull out a plum, then you know it's a plum pie. When you stick your thumb in a Christian, watch how they react. Do they say thank you and God bless you and love you? Or are they ticked off because you upset their apple cart? Be careful. You may be surprised by the active people are also reactive very easily. Stick with being one-on-one -on -one with Jesus and you'll never find yourself went over by being the winner in all these activities and getting a prize that may not be what God decided for you today.